to democracy with preemptive strikes. We're going to bring development. We're going to bring them democracy. We're going to teach them what to do with their gold. We're bringing you the horses of the apocalypse. This is the grandmother, the abuela of the Plaza de Mayos, where women in Argentina have for years and decades, week in, week out, have uh, stood up against militarism, have stood up against the military power, against fear, and have said, together we are strong, and together we can bring justice uh, you know, to the generals that were torturing, that were ordering killings. They're going to jail now, thanks to the work of these courageous women, the Madres de Plaza de Mayo. What it means to me is that I'm doing a little small something um, to resist the Pentagon support of the military in Central and Latin America, because they're responsible for death and killing in my name, and I don't agree with that. Listen to that! People were rounded up and put in the church and killed 750 people, including the babies. How were they trained to do that? They were trained, the Octiel Battalion, the battalion, they were trained to do torture and, and counterinsurgency, I guess it was called. How do you know that's true? That was, well, it was in the New Yorker. <laughs> that's one place. It was in, the, first it was reported, I think in the New York Times, and the person that reported it was fired. But then it, it just became too possible to keep it down. Why are you here? Why are you doing this? Um, just be in solidarity with people who uh, wake up and their daughters and sons are missing or murdered. I mean, it's worth standing up and using your voice to uh, speak up against it. Oh, it's doing great. I think we are telling people not to worry because we're going to take back South America. We're going to take back the resources of South America and teach them about democracy. We're going to train their soldiers how to control their Indians, how to control their troopers, 
Well, we're being killed right now. There was a coup in 2009, and militarism is still in Honduras. We have a military dictatorship, and we have over 200 people dead until the, 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 the 2009 until now. And what did the School of Americas have to do with it? Well, all the the generals of the the, 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 the made a coup were graduates of the School of the Americas. And now the ones that are now in, in charge of the coup and the, the regime are also part of the School of the Americas. And the Honduran military forces doesn't move a finger without the permission of the U.S. Army. And we know that they're behind us and they, we know that they're supporting them. So that's why we're here, to, uh, to, to be part of this process with the people of the United States against uh, militarism and against uh, the School of the Americas and what it does. I'm part of the National Front of Popular Resistance. I'm in charge of the relationship with the people of the United States and Canada. And well, I've been part. Of, I've been part of the resistance since the coup. I was part of the popular movement before, and now we have been fighting. We're going to be two years in this June since the coup, and the resistance is getting stronger, but also the repression is getting stronger and killing a lot of people. Perlas from Ciudad Juarez, which is the most violent city in the world now, and it's the most violent city because of the drug war. So what she said is that the United States government is responsible for every drop of blood that's been spilled in Mexico, which have been 40,000 people just in the last four years. And this is because the United States is supporting this drug war that was launched by President Calderon against, supposedly against drug traffickers, but that has been responsible for the death of so many people within the country. What's the solution? And an end to the Merida initiative, was here, which is U.S. support for the drug war, an end to Plan Merida. I am here to support the School of the Americas work to end militarizations around the world. I am from Haiti originally, and we know we have been victim by the armies. And right now we have the UN multilateral forces in the country that's not doing much to assist us. So I am here to show solidarity because they've always supported us. You know, many of the Haitian generals were trained by the United States in, in, in Ecuador and elsewhere. So we want that to finish because the money that is being used for the army can be invested in the country for development, for school, for clean water, for transportation and healthcare and many, many other things that the population needs. I was a student activist during the baby duck era. When he left, I was very young, but I stayed active in the movement, supported the Lavalas movement that brought Aristide into office. So I've lost many friends, students like myself who died in support of democracy in Haiti. So I am all about democracy and making sure it's prosperous. I would like to see change happen. I want to see militarization end. I want to see all the uh, war that are taking place end because too much money is invested, too many people's lives get lost. Well, not things. War kills people. It does not change the country. It destroys what we have. She's holding a bouquet of blue roses, and a lot of folks have blue roses here. And the blue rose, uh, often in literature, is used to express the idea that something that's unattainable, a blue rose doesn't exist in nature. So if you have the blue rose, you have the impossible. You can attain the impossible. And so the, our idea is to memorialize so many people dead. It's such a gargantuan task. It's such an impossible seemingly task. But we do that in Fort Benning, Georgia every year. These people are honored. They're memorialized. Resisting the most powerful military in the world. It's such an impossible task, it seems impossible. But by holding the blue roses, we're signifying that we can attain the impossible. Let's go to our wonderful White House to deliver the message that the grandmother, that the grandmother has brought us a blue, a blue rose, the blue rose of hope, of healing, of memory. The grandmothers don't forget the cost of Capitalism! We have to pay for progress! We have to pay for taking the resources! And that's why we train their good soldiers how to control their Indians who don't know what to do with Mother Earth. Mother Earth is a commodity! Welcome to the 
the elder of the culture. So here we are, standing with all the mothers of the disappeared. The grandmothers are speaking, and we will not stop speaking until there is justice across the land, across the planet. When we are all together, yes, we can. Cuando estamos todos unidos, sí se puede. Very important part of our movement, the non-violent direct action. We go to prison. Vamos a la cárcel. We get arrested. Nos arrestan. To keep alive the memories of our sisters and brothers who had been at the receiving end of our foreign policy. We use direct action to call attention to a grave injustice. And today we will continue our tradition in the SOA Watch movement and do a nonviolent direct action in front of the White House. And we hope that President Obama is in there and will see us. And so, and 
in memory of the many compañeros and compañeros who have been killed, made to suffer, tortured, disappeared. We remember you, and today we walk in solidarity with you.